Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting logarithmic or maybe exponential or maybe both equation. So this is kind of homemade because I thought about it. I came up with the idea, but these kinds of questions actually depend on a certain idea, which I will discuss a little later. And you can also come up with these kinds of equations easily. That shouldn't be too hard. Now we have ln x equals log x divided by e to the power x, e being the Euler's number, the number that appears in natural log, and uh, we're going to be solving for x values. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the solution, uh, and also at the end I'm going to show you a graph. All right, so let's go ahead and do the following. What can we do? Cross multiply both sides. All right, let's cross multiply. We get e to the x, ln x equals log x. At this point, uh, there's a couple different possibilities. You can ln both sides, which is not going to be very helpful because you're going to get something like ln log x and ln ln x. I don't think that's going to be helpful. It could be, I don't know. Or uh, you could try the Lambert's w function or something else. So I'm going to be doing something else. And that is called, it's a very important property of logarithms, by the way, and it's often overlooked. It is called change of base. So let's go ahead and talk about change of base, and then we're going to apply it to our problem. Change of base, which I guess you can call COB, works like this. Suppose you have log base B of A, and you want to write it in a different base, like let's say X. You kind of write it like this. You put the A here and the B here. Make sense? The upper number is in the numerator and the bottom number or the lower number is in the denominator. Easy, right? Kind of easy. And if you're using uh, natural log, then this looks like ln A over ln B. Or if you're using base 10, it looks like log A over log B. But I usually prefer the ln. So this is change of base. And we're going to apply it to our problem. Let's go ahead and do that. But let me rewrite it. e to the x ln x equals log x. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and turn the log x into a quotient of ln's. So here's how we can do it. Since the base is 10 here, you can write it if you want. Uh, this can be written as ln x over ln 10. Ln 10 is a constant. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But when you see an equation like this, it's I know it's a temptation. We just want to cross out ln x, right? Let's just cross it out, simplify the whole expression. That's not good, though. You're going to be losing some solutions. Instead, you want to put everything on the same side. So division is not good. Multiplication is sometimes not good because you might be introducing extraneous solutions. Uh, but subtraction and addition are okay. So let's go ahead and subtract ln x over ln 10 from both sides. All right? So set it equal to 0. Now we want to take out ln x because that is a common factor. Makes sense, right? So it's going to look like this. Beautiful. Now we have two factors. We can set each one equal to 0 and find the corresponding x values. First one is fairly easy. ln x equals 0 gives us x equals 1 because you can do e to the power of both sides or just think about it the definition or uh, one of the you know properties of logs uh, the log of 1 is always 0 at any base of course when I say any base base must be greater than 0 also different from 1 so it's either between 0 and 1 or greater than 1 so x equals 1 is a solution, and if you go back to the original problem, you're going to notice that it works, because if you plug in 1 here, you get a 0, and you get a 0. Nothing happens with the bottom, because that can't be 0, so that's good. So imagine we had the uh, flip situation, like suppose you had ln x equals e to the x over log x, then x equals 1 would not work. Obviously, in this case, it wouldn't work anyways, but suppose you had the following, which is kind of pretty much the same thing as this one. What if we had 1 over ln x equals e to the x over log x? When you do cross multiplication, you get the exact same equation. But the difference is x equals 1 does not work. It makes it undefined. It's not even like a complex solution. It just does not work. So x does not equal 1 here. Make sense? You get the idea? That's why it's important to check 
the original equation all the time to make sure that the solutions we found uh, actually work. And in this case, x equals 1 works. So we're good on that. What about the other solution? The other solution is not that trivial, but we can still handle it. Come on, let's just set this equal to 0, and we'll go from there. e to the x minus 1 over ln 10 equals 0, which implies e to the x equals 1 over ln 10. Okay, things are nice and dandy, right? Okay, so here's the problem. The problem is to find x, we do need to raise uh, or not raise. We need to natural log both sides. Make sense? So that's what we got to do. So how do we do that? Uh, well, let's go ahead and do it. ln e to the x equals ln 1 over ln 10. Okay. So from here, what do we get? From here, we get x to the front, x equals ln 1 over ln 10. So this might look normal to you, right? I mean, what is wrong with this? Everything looks good, right? The problem is ln 10 is greater than 1. So 1 over ln 10 is less than 1. Makes sense? Obviously, ln 10 is greater than ln e, right? So this is less than 1. It's kind of a fraction like 1 half. But if you have something that's less than 1, it's ln is going to be, because ln is an increasing function, is going to be less than ln 1, which is 0. Uh-oh, we got a negative number, so this number is less than 0. So what's wrong with that, though? Can't we accept a negative answer? And the answer is no. Why? Because if you go back to the original problem, if x is negative, Houston, we got a problem. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's another problem that I'm always having with Desmos. But yeah, if x is negative, then we're out of the domain for real numbers. Then ln x and log x are not going to be real numbers. There are still solutions. There are complex solutions. And I can kind of walk you through real quick, but that wasn't my intention for this problem. But in other words, we have no real solutions from here. All right. Great, so an ln 1 over ln 10 can be written as ln 1 minus ln ln 10, which is negative ln ln 10. This kind of also tells you that this number is negative because this is obviously a positive quantity because ln 10 is greater than 1, but uh, opposite of that would be a negative quantity. Make sense? Okay, so what do we do with this? We can go ahead and write this as a complex number and then solve the problem. So how do you do that? Well, you can basically just consider this number. And if you have a negative number, by the way, if let's say you're trying to write negative 2 as a complex number, how would you do that, right? You would look at the angle. That's going to be a pi. So you would write negative 2 as 2 times e to the power i pi. And of course, you can also add multiples of 2, uh, two pi. Or you can write this as 2n plus 1 times pi, which is going to be all the branches. This is just the principal branch. And then you can just go from there. And you have to ln both sides one more time, so on and so forth. And let me show you the graph, and we'll just finish up real quick. I gave you the idea. Hopefully, you can take it from there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.